Lagos is a major financial center and economic hub for Nigeria and Africa. Described as Africa's cultural, financial, and entertainment capital, the city has a significant impact on commerce, entertainment, technology, education, politics, tourism, art, and fashion. It is ranked among the world's top 10 fastest growing mega cities, has one of the continent's largest and busiest seaports, and has the fourth largest GDP in Africa. The state is home to 65% of Nigeria's businesses, with the presence of more than 2,000 manufacturing companies, 200 financial institutions, and the largest collection of small and medium enterprises in Africa. In the last two decades, one man has undeniably been credited with the city's evolution and development as the architect of modern Lagos. His name, Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinobu. Fifteen years after he served as governor of Lagos State, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinobu, is meeting with the business community and the organized private sector in Lagos. The town hall meeting, which was held at the Eco Hotel and Suites on Victoria Island, Lagos, had in attendance the president of Dangote Group, Aliko Dangote, Tony Lumelu, chairman of UBA, Jimovia, chairman of Zenith Bank, Aikboje Aik Imokwede, former chief executive of Access Bank, and other business leaders representing sectorial groups such as agriculture, oil and gas, trade, manufacturing, creative, digital sector, among others. The town hall session had in attendance the vice presidential candidate, Senator Kashim Shetima, Governors Babajide Sonwolu, Samon Bako Lalung, who is also the Director General of the APC Presidential Campaign Council, Atiku Bagudu, Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, Abubakar Abadaru, Dakpo Abiodun, Ade Boyega Oyetola, Nasir Erufai, and Abdullahi Ganduje, as well as other party leaders and chieftains. In his welcome address, Lagos State Governor Babajide Somwolu said the APC presidential candidate, Bola Amber Tinubu, had made his mark in the private sector in governance, recalling that he started the engagement with the private sector as far back as 2001. According to him, Ehim Betty, which was among the products of the engagement, led to infrastructural renewal of Lagos under Tinubu as then governor between 1999 and 2007. As the 12th executive governor of Lagos State, Shuajibola had made Tinubu, pioneered several firsts, started this engagement with the organized private sector way ahead of a lot of his peers at that time. You will recall that way back in winning his first tenure as the governor of this state, he started with the Engbeti Summit in 2001. That summit had continued to lead and to lead us into various economic agenda that successive government has been able to live on. He started and he baked what we know as the LEAP agenda. Under the LEAP agenda, he created the 10-point developmental agenda. The LEAP agenda, which is called the Lagos Advancement and Economic Program, led to the 10-point agenda at that time. And in the 10-point agenda, the likes of education, health, infrastructural renewal, justice and law and order, food security, public sector reform, public transportation and traffic management, power and water resources, job creation and poverty alleviation, where the high points and the development um, um, cliche that both himself and yourselves as organized private sector created way back there in 2002-2003. You will also remember that at that time, we all, through his leadership, also created the Lagos Lacid document, which was a sectoral dissection of what the economy and the economics of Lagos should be for the next five to ten years. You will recall also that it was also during his time that we usually have a regular interactive session 
with the organized private sector. And he also recalled that during his time, several, several firsts were recorded. It was the sub, first sub-national that brought about independent power projects into our country. It was the first sub-national that was able to ensure that he gets what we see now as a lucky deep sea port. The first of its kind in the entire southern part of our country. The first that we have seen big, large corporations bathing all their resources in Lagos. You will recall also that during his tenure, we birthed the Aquatlantic, the biggest real estate reclamation that we have seen in the entire sub Saharan Africa. It was also during his time that indeed the private sector has a space in governance. He created a first class private sector driven cabinet that indeed we all know till today is still the envy of everybody. Indeed, this man, he's no stranger to you. This man, he's no stranger to what your needs and your aspirations and your concerns are. This man is no stranger to how you feel as private sector, as businessmen, as businesswomen, as leaders of our economies, to be able to sit with you and ensure that that concerns that you have on a day-to-day -day basis, he can indeed organize and ensure that it will be things of the past. He will be able to bring back his private sector dexterity, his private sector acumen, his private sector trajectory to bear with you understanding what are your pains, what are your concerns. This is the man that we're here to listen to. This is a man that I know that all of you captains of industry see him as part of you. We are the same coin. We're just on different side of the coin. Today, he stands here as a politician, as the leader of our party, as a presidential candidate. But if you look at the other side of the coin, you see a man that is compassionate. You say man that is business driven. You say man that has a lot of acume and intelligent and understanding that you our businesses go through and understand and appreciate on a day-to-day -day basis. Leadership, they say it's everything. But leadership is tough. Leadership is hard. You've seen what is happening in global economy. We're not immune. It's not only in our country. It's not only in West Africa. The global trend shows that indeed it's time for leaders stand up and be counted. Ashiwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu, a man that I've come to respect, is a man that also can help our businesses here in Lagos and in Nigeria. In his remarks, Director General APC Presidential Campaign Council Simon Lalog applauded Tinubu's manifesto to transform the country, declaring that the party's presidential candidate had his name being mentioned consistently since 1999 based on his contributions to the development of Lagos State. According to him, Tinubu has been of support to many businessmen and women and had moved many out of poverty. This town hall meeting and interaction is one of the avenues adopted by the PCC to ensure that our presidential candidate and his running mate, Senator Kashim Shetima, break down the details of their action plan to all relevant sectors of the Nigerian electorate. You will recall that our candidate, Asuwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, gave highlights of his vision for a greater Nigeria when he unveiled his action plan entitled, quote, Renewed Hope at the presidential villa Abuja recently. In the process of engagement with key stakeholders within the Nigerian project, Asuwaju has decided to meet and speak directly with you about the details of his Renewed Hope agenda, particularly as it relates to the economy, which is your primary constituency. This is because apart from underscoring the important role that you play in building the economic fortunes of Nigeria, he believed that with your support, he will achieve his goals of transforming the nation when elected into office. Most, if not all of you, have known Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu in one way or the other, and have also benefited from his political and economic policies that have made sure Lagos remains the economic capital of Nigeria. Since 1999, when he became governor of Lagos, Till today, when many governors have run the state after him, there is no time that the name 
Tinubu does not come up when you talk about the prosperity of this state and many others across the region. Here is a man of vision who believes that nation building requires a systematic approach of generating and implementing innovative ideas to governors where the best brands are assembled and given responsibilities under supervision and with expected results that are evaluated. That is why he stands tall among most of his peers and all those seeking to govern Nigeria in 2023. We believe that his antecedents and the records of turning waste to wealth and turning despondency to hope makes him the best candidate for the job. I am sure that this forum will enable many of you the opportunity to highlight and to recall some of the policies which he initiated that, is, that stood the test of time under various governors that took over from him. For us in APC, marketing Tinubu Shetuma presidential brand to the business community in Nigeria is not a difficult tax because Asuaju is successful. He's a successful businessman and one that has mentored and supported many successful businessmen and women. He has turned street boys into business owners and has removed many from poverty. His manifesto, Renewed Hope, which will be part of this discourse, has already outlined practical steps and decisions to be taken on various sectors of the economy once he comes into office. I know that you will take him up on all issues in the document which concern you or require clarification. As the DG of the PCC, and with the hindsight of working closely with him, I can assure you that Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tunubu is passionate about bringing prosperity to all Nigerians through providing the right environment for the pri private sector to thrive. Apart from his commitment to revamp energy and power, he has vowed to root out all security threats in whatever form and from all parts of the country. Asuaju is eager. Asuaju is eager to put our youths to work and reducing poverty through job creation and opening up opportunities. This can only be achieved with your support as you are the people that will create these jobs when his government gives you the conducive environment to operate and thrive. Once again, I welcome you and urge you to feel free to engage the APC presidential candidate, Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the city boy, who is at home. <laughs> who is at home with the business community and the organized private sector in no other place than Lagos, which has his footprints all over. Taking to the podium, the APC presidential standard bearer laid out his action plan before the business leaders. Ashiwaju Tinubu said having achieved similar economic success as Lagos State Governor, he has the capacity to repeat the same feat this time as president. Nigerian standard, the threshold between indifference and greatness, prosperity and poverty, the future and the past. The door is ajar. Together, let us open it so that we may cross over to the better side and secure for this beloved nation is finer and it is finest destiny. The productive and the beneficial thing we seek to do lie in the sole domain of one sector. They reside in the cooperation between government and the private sector. I see no conflict between the business community and government. Yet, with equal conviction, I believe the private sector and government 
should constantly be at war. But they wage this battle not as enemies. They must stand as inseparable allies, combating the mutual enemies of scarcity, underdevelopment, joblessness, and fear. This bad thing breed. For this reason, to join you in this battle, I am honored to meet with you, the leaders, the business community, and private sector. Lagos is an appropriate venue to do it. You may have heard that I was once a governor of this state, if you didn't know before. <laughs> I was once governor. May I remind you that when I first entered office, Lagos was a different story. I listened to the current governor, Mr. Babajide Sanwolu. I feel thrilled. I thought my day was made. I don't have to. I don't have to address you again. He said it all. My team and I developed a blueprint, a master plan for Lagos. I can say that plan has been largely successful. We turned this state into a safer, more prosperous place where people can go about and about any legitimate vocation or venture, regardless of their ethnicity, religion, region, or prior social status. We did more than open Lagos for business. We opened the door for all Nigerians to join and experience the recent things progressive democratic governance can bring. We were not perfect, but we did a lot. In doing so, we work hand in hand with the business community as partners, sharing the same goal of prosperity and renewed hope. Well, as you might have heard at some point recently, I now stand before you seeking a bigger yet similar job. For someone who has done it before, while at the helm of affairs as governor of Lagos State, Bola Tinobu reassured the private sector that his government will record double-digit economic growth once it hits the ground running after winning the 2023 election. The pragmatic problem solving and the teamwork, unbreakable teamwork, that improve Lagos is what I want to bring to the nation. I ask you to help as the task ahead is doable but difficult. Here I will say something that captures the essence of our economic challenge. Each of us has the voice, this belief, before, in various ways, 
and you own your word. Each time I say or oh, hear it, I become humbled by the enormity of what we face. Yet, I'm also inspired that we can surmount this great challenge. From its very inception, our political economy has been imbalanced and in need of major reform. Our political economy is much too dependent on the export of raw materials or on finished goods and the import of increasingly expensive finished products. Over the course of the time, gains from natural resource exports will prove largely insufficient to meet the rising cost of imports, let alone support even the most basic demand of modern democratic governance. The time is now to cure this lack. It's a disease. We must cure it. And time is of essence, for it does not wage, wait for any man or nation. We commend the work of a prior administration, especially the present government. They did their best. The government has performed with the patriotism and commitment during trying times. If you don't know it was trying time, I know, and many Nigerians know. But we simply must go further and faster. My experiences in both private sector and elective office afford me a special appreciation of economic potency that close collaboration between government and the business community can bring. Allow me to share a few ideas that provide some insight into my vision for a more prosperous and secure nation where hope is renewed and despair is rebuffed. We must maintain the channels and spirit of respectful and productive dialogue. At the same time, at times, what I say may help you. Other times, what you say may enlighten me. I must listen. We must always talk and converse with the best of intentions, just as this open door policy is with me before the election. I shall continue to honor it, and after the election, I will continue to respect it. Since you came as a group, I came as a member of your team. My esteemed and exceptionally able running mate, Shetima Kazim, will share his thought on key aspects of our action plan. Will we be followed by others who represent our now and tomorrow? You think young, 
you build young, you develop future leadership, you make a tomorrow better than today because of your faith and their capacity to dream, wonder, and believe that a nation is not driven by itself, but the content and the people who resides in it, who will not be satisfied with the average standard of living. A nation like Nigeria, the giant of Africa, it will move, crush all enemies, bring pro progress and prosperity for us today and tomorrow. In July 2022, Bola Ahmed Tinubu announced Senator Kashim Shatima as his running mate in the 2023 general election. He made that announcement that fateful Sunday in Daura, the hometown of President Mohamed Buhari in Kasina State. Shatima, who said it was an honor for him to work side by side with Ashiwaju Tinubu in order to achieve the APC presidential candidate's dream for the country, declared that the time had come for Nigerians to manufacture what they consume, even as he projected that the APC administration under them would achieve double-digit GDP growth for the country in the next two years. According to the party's vice presidential candidate, the Tinubu-led government would focus on agriculture and increase the quality of life of Nigerians, just as it says the focus will be directed on quality education to achieve the same aim. I will start with a topic that we know is on everyone's mind at this time, security. We recognize that insecurity is a major deterrent of private enterprises and investments, not to talk of the threat to life and livelihoods. That is why we plan to adopt a proactive and intelligence-driven approach to addressing the nation's security challenges. This will include bolstering Security forces in numbers, training, equipment, salaries, and welfare. In the last eight years, our defense budget has increased from 400 billion naira to 1.2 trillion naira per annum. In similar vein, our administration is prepared to make the necessary further investments in order to significantly reduce the nation's security threats. On the other topical matter of the economy, our target is rightly encapsulated by my principal, is to achieve double-digit GDP growth within a couple of years. The next speaker will talk about the fiscal and monetary policies that will underpin this growth. And of course, we cannot achieve such rapid but necessary sustainable economic trajectory without the requisite infrastructure base. Therefore. We plan to partner with you, the private sector, to undertake a national campaign to develop the infrastructure necessary to facilitate profitable enterprise and improved quality of life. We will continue to engage with you to ensure we are providing you with the support you require in order to develop and implement bankable projects. Of particular note, are our plan reforms to reposition Nigeria for sufficient on-grid power generation, transmission, and distribution. We currently transmit about 4,500 megawatts, which is far below our installed generation capacity of approximately 12,000 megawatts. We probably need to generate and deliver 20,000 megawatts to drive rapid economic growth and development in the near to medium term. To this end, we will also implement reforms to drive investment in rural and renewable energy. Addressing our power issue is not a luxury, but a necessity and must be treated as such. And globally, housing development is a big stimulator of economic growth and improved quality of life. With this understanding, we will introduce policies aimed at reducing the housing deficit across the country 
This will include streamlining the land conveyancing process and providing the necessary incentives to boost mortgage lending as well as consumer credit in general. <laughs> Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for Nigeria to manufacture, create, and invent more of what Nigerians consume. As such, the Tinubu administration will work to align our infrastructure priorities with the industrial master plan and introduce policies and incentives to encourage local production. As we have seen over the last few years, we cannot continue to be as import dependent as we have been. And shortly, my colleague Olu will also share more details about our plans to reform the oil and gas sector and how we are going to accelerate the full implementation of the PIA so as to pass track the realization of the expected benefits to all stakeholders, including the use of our gas resources for the nation's electricity industry. Similarly, our action plan for agriculture will focus on how to increase agricultural productivity, mechanization, food security, and palm incomes. The impact of the recent flaws on palms and lives has been a wake-up call for all of us. Our plans include establishing commodity boards, deepening the use of commodity exchanges, modernizing and enhancing our grain reserves, providing supporting infrastructure, and improving access to finance. As you may well imagine, another key priority for us is implementing reforms in the education and healthcare sectors aimed at raising the quality of lives of Nigerians, rich and poor alike. We expect to significantly improve the education sector by focusing on the following key indices, quality, access, funding, management, effectiveness, and competitiveness. The key thrust of our approach is to ensure that there is quality education for all. Technical and vocational education is improved, and tertiary education is placed on a solid and sustainable path. We are confident that these improvements will also yield significant benefits to employers. The event also featured a panel session, largely made up of young Nigerians who bore their minds intelligently on the developmental plan of the APC. I believe I fit into the demographic of the now rather than the future, as referred to by the APC presidential candidate. We have heard from the APC presidential candidate and the vice president their plan, their economic plan for Nigeria. We have heard their determination and their commitment to provide the leadership that will produce double-digit growth, that will create employment opportunities, that will address the issue of poverty and inequality. And a strategy clearly stated here today and in the action plan is that they will rely heavily on the private sector, on investors, on new businessmen here to make the investments that increase productivity, that lead to growth, that lead to employment, that reduces poverty, which is the overall aim of their government, a sustained reduction in poverty. We know, and they understand very well, that the macroeconomic environment, the predictability of interest rates, exchange rates, growth rates, and indeed inflation, are critical for investors. We heard here today from an investor who has been in this country a hundred years with his family that the exchange rate, multiple exchange rates, is an issue. It is the commitment of, the, of a Tinubu Shetima administration to, within a reasonable period, say a year, unify the exchange rate, <laughs> deliver a market-based transparent system of foreign exchange trading. Clearly, there are other important areas, and they've touched upon them. Security has been mentioned by both 
uh, the, the presidential candidate and the vice presidential candidate, a stable environment for regulations where there's no flip-flop of policies and regulations, reducing the bottlenecks that come with doing business, particularly with government, and of course, the all-embracing infrastructure issue. However, there are problems. There is definitely a revenue problem. The government does not have enough revenue right now to operate. And, that's, and you see it clearly in the spiraling debt uh, um, burden that the country is, is experiencing. At the end of the day, by the time you have a growing economy, you will have higher revenue from taxes, from businesses that are doing well, that will give the government the funding that it requires to provide public goods and services. But in the meantime, what to do? A Tinubu Shatima administration would immediately boost tax revenue, not by raising tax rates, but by compliance, by adding, uh, re-engineering the system, using the latest technology, as the presidential candidate once did so many years ago in Lagos, and the benefit is being re re received and built on even till today. A widening of the tax net rather than burdening a few taxpayers. In addition, there are opportunities to boost revenue, immediate opportunities. We know that you have to incentivize key investors, and they're all here, so many of them in the front row here. They commit to making investment, taking risks, and they have to be incentivized. However, $5 trillion in taxes, uh, um, tariff and duty waivers and ex ex exemptions clearly goes beyond what they need to operate and, in fact, what they get. Similar, that's about $5 trillion naira. Similarly, the foreign exchange subsidy, $5 trillion naira which could be coming to the government. And thirdly, oil theft. A Tinubu Shetima administration would robustly confront, engage, and subdue using state power the vested interests that are costing six, five or six trillion a year. In addition, still talking about the revenue that the government needs immediately, of course, the action plan says it, and they've said it here today. Oil subsidy will be removed. The subsidy on petroleum will be removed. That's another six trillion. When you add up those figures from three revenue saving areas and one cost saving area, it's over 20 trillion naira. That is the 2023 budget funded. At the same time, there is a debt issue. Debt servicing is high relative to revenue. And the answer, the answer to that under Etinubu Shetima administration would be to raise revenue, bring in the revenue that now makes debt, um, debt servicing affordable. The Etinubu Shetima administration will drive industrialization by growing gas consumption to three domestic gas consumption to three BCF per day by 2030 to be used in the power sectors, the fertilizer sector, and other petrochemical sectors. To achieve this, we will unlock investments and accelerate the completion of critical projects like Asa North, OB3, ELPS, AKK. The Tinubu Shetima administration will deliver on the decade of gas by doing the following. Within 12 months, we we'll transition domestic gas prices to allow investors earn a commercial return on gas supply. You will pay off, we will pay off the accumulated debts owed by the power sector to the gas suppliers. NERC will be allowed to, dis, to, allow, will be allowed to enable discos charge electricity tariffs that earn a commercial return for their investors and pay commercial prices for gas. 
administration will do the following to attract capital to this critical sector. First, they will restore investor confidence at our existing production capacity. The normal cycle of IOCs divesting mature oil and gas provinces to independence with leaner cost structures has been accelerated by crude theft and pipeline vandalization. The Tinubu Shatima team has the political will to take on vested interests to end crude theft. It will also ensure the 3% host community fund brings, much about need, brings about much needed development in host community, fosters a more secure operating environment, and reduces the cost of doing business. As to you, Bola Ahmed Tinubu correctly believes that the final solution to the challenges in agriculture and endemic rural poverty lies in reconnecting both sectors to the global market to overcome the crippling effects of the sectors under capitalization. Asiwajibola Ahmed Tinubu correctly believes that there is no better way to attract the needed investment and improvement in the two interrelated sectors than through regional commodity exchanges. The regional commodity exchanges would come with institutions, infrastructures, and instruments that would address the enduring challenges of low agricultural productivity, negate the lack of financial inclusion among 40 million farmers and rural dwellers, stop the arbitrage which keeps our farmers in perpetual poverty, reverse the absence of a national food security program, open up the global markets for agricultural output, turning around the lack of standardization and ultimately guarantee an endless flow of liquidity from the global financial markets for the proper capitalization and substantial improvement of output in agriculture in Nigeria. There are very compelling macroeconomic factors why commodity exchanges should start as regional entities. Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, a strong advocate for the political reorganization and economic restructuring of Nigeria, believes that the federating unit requires solid economic institutions and structures that would endanger commercial competition and capital accumulation among the federating units. In part of the country where agriculture and rural areas are the major components of the informal sector, we believe that the praxis of a warehousing receipt system will shrink the informal sector and make deposit money banks viable enough to extend financial inclusion to rural inhabitants, including women farmers. A warehousing receipt system will also turn the huge farming population of 40 million people into tax payers. Aswaji Bola Ahmed Tinubu subscribes to the world perspective that it is this transformation of 40 million farmers into tax payers that will make the subnational government finally financially viable. It is offset that the small and medium enterprise is the lifeblood of an economy. Today, in Nigeria, it accounts for 96% of businesses, 84% of employment, but contributes just 48% to the gross domestic product. If, therefore, to further energize and to serve as a catalyst for growth of the economy, it would be best to strengthen the SMEs. There are various challenges facing the SMEs today in Nigeria, chief of which is access to adequately priced capital. A Tinibu Shatima administration will work with financial institutions, the relevant regulatory agencies, to ensure that it provides 
adequately priced capital for deserving SMEs. This will serve SMEs to start up, strengthen, and to scale. Secondly, there is an infrastructure deficit in Nigeria. The incoming administration will work assiduously, partnering with international institutions to develop and strengthen the regulatory framework for PPP, as well as other and alternative innovative financing models to fund the infrastructure deficit and to ensure that SMEs can grow, SMEs can gain sustainable profit margins to scale. Third is the capacity gap. The establishment of an SME academy to strengthen and build up capacity within the SME sector will generate more income, lead more SMEs to success and sustainable growth in the economy. Nigeria has already shown early indicators of success in leading Africa and the world in the digital economy. Lagos is one of the top 100 startup cities in the world. Nigeria is home to five of, the se of Africa's seven billion dollar companies. Last year, our technology founders brought home a third of the $5.4 billion invested in venture capital across Africa. And according to our most recent Q2 GDP numbers by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, the technology sector leads all other sectors, including oil and gas, in its contribution to 18.44% of our GDP. Beyond all of that, it has been responsible, and I have personally witnessed this, for, some, for a mini economic miracle that has seen tens of thousands of young people lift themselves out of poverty by legitimately earning considerable amounts of foreign exchange, working from right here in Nigeria for global technology companies all over the world. The Tinubu Shetima administration sees the early promise of the digital economy and is committed to doubling down on it. We believe there are four pillars we must focus on in this regard, as typified by the acronym TIME. The first is talent. How do we retool our education system to provide our young people the digital skills they need to contribute to the digital economy? The second is infrastructure. How do we invest in infrastructure for the digital economy, including broadband? The third is markets. How do we leverage technology and innovation to more effectively aggregate demand and supply to create new globally relevant markets in the wake of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement? And the last but not the least is the environment. How will we lead the global carbon transition by investing in our universities to undertake R&D efforts to innovate scalable net zero technologies and processes that can be applied across agriculture, energy, manufacturing uh, in, in particular? The Tinubu Shetima administration is fully committed to position Nigeria as Africa's number one frontier for technology startups. The administration will do this through the following policies. We will create policies that encourage the growth of tech startups building solutions using emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, internet of things, and robotics, and also encourage local and international VCs to invest in tech startups in Nigeria. How will we do this? We will do this by reducing bureaucracies and red tapes um, for startups to be able to get permits and also give them tax incentives and access to market, access to government contracts. Another way to improve startups is to export tech talent. 60% of Nigeria's population are youths. We will build capacity by providing digital skill development through subsidizing STEM education. This will help the rapid growth of tech startups and Nigeria will see um, lots of export, um, talents to export and also earn foreign exchange, which is very, very critical for the economy. In his words, here is a recap of the ideas and vision Ashiwa Jubola Ametinubu shared with the business community for a more prosperous and secure nation where hope is renewed and despair rebuffed. All Nigerians must be invested in our better future. 
we must maintain the channels and spirit of respectful and productive dialogue. We must target double-digit GDP to begin to reduce the poverty rate, and I am determined to accomplish this. We shall bring the nation's industrial policy to life. Key to this is our aim to create major and minor industrial hubs in each geopolitical zone. We shall continue to press reforms in the sector that will increase productivity and improve farm incomes while lowering food prices and bringing enough food to the tables of ordinary people. I am determined to give you the affordable and reliable power you need to drive your businesses in a way that lifts the entire economy. We seek a consumer credit revolution, working in concert with the banking industry led by the CBN, credit at affordable rates enables the purchase of more cars and the construction of more homes. We must continue with the expansion of infrastructure commenced by the current government from our roads and ports that will pave the way for more commerce. You have seen it all. You are convinced out of all the contenders for the presidency in the political firmament of Nigeria today, I make bold to state emphatically, none, none has demonstrated this dexterity and knowledge and vision and courage. <laughs> Till the very moment. And mark my words, what you are seeing here is just a minor school of what you are going to have when the government is in place in terms of the knowledge, the methodology of how to achieve and translate vision into reality as have been amply demonstrated by the principal and his vice in their respective states. And that's why we always hammer on the track record of achievements of these two fine gentlemen, achievers, performers in their own right. The symbolism must never be lost on us. They have shown it. They've demonstrated it. And another dimension is actually the team. They have engaged in interactive sessions with you. And that is a pointer, an indicator to the style of administration of this incoming government. It will engage you, the public, in all its policy, conceptualization, enunciation, execution, and monitoring all the way. Just to add to what uh, my friend and brother has said, Mr. Alaki, he said what we have seen today, Mr. President, you acted truly presidential. First, Mr. President, in waiting, you assembled young, brilliant men and women. And I thought when the lady asked, how many women will you appoint? The simple answer is, look at the panelists. The most eloquent, you were all eloquent, but allow me to make my judgment. The most eloquent of all the panelists were the ladies. Even when I didn't agree with some points, the way of presentation. So I think you have shown practically what your government will look like. Additionally, I hope the members of the business community and the Nigeria youth generally will look at the faces here. It also makes a statement about your conviction that the Nigerian young people can run Nigeria and run it even better. The other thing I observe, whereas as president you will delegate authority, however, you are only delegating and putting an eye on how those who are delegated execute their responsibilities. Which is why from time to time you intervene and say, yes, however, this is my position. That is leadership 
That is presidency. That is discipline. That is courage. The other thing that I think should not be lost on those who are here and those who may be viewing is that by your selection of people to assist you this afternoon, you have shown that those who think Nigeria problem is federal character, they know next to nothing. The brains here represent not just the Wazobia. So I join Alake to say to Nigeria people, we need a president who will have the courage, the discipline to see the whole of the country as his comfort zone and proceed to form a government that the people can trust. In 2023, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is poised to hit the ground running with responsible and responsive leadership for Nigeria to prosper as a nation and thrive as a people. The take-home from this town hall meeting with the business community and the organized private sector is a nation with hope renewed, where dignity in labor is realized and the potential of industry is maximized.